In this video, I'm going to show how to do a basic venipuncture. So for a conscious patient, you would ask, you would come into the room, or if they come into your draw site facility, you'd say, hi, my name is Lacey. You'd introduce yourself. I'm gonna be your phlebotomist today because your daughter, doctor has ordered some important tests. And can you tell me your full name and your date of birth or some other unique identifier like an address or medical record number? And it's important to have them tell you their full name rather than asking them, are you Arturo Capetti? Because they could just reflexively say yes. And that wouldn't be a true identification. It can uh, allows opportunities for misidentification. So for this patient, uh, he is, we we're gonna say he doesn't have mental capacity. So uh, I have an armband for him and I am going to double check my requisition slip that I have with his armband to make sure that the name matches Arturo Valentine Capetti, Arturo Valentine Capetti, his date of birth match matches, 2-14-1962, 2-14-1962, and his MRN matches, 1-9-6-5-7-2-1, 1-9-6-5-7-2-1. We have a positive match, so this patient, as far as we can tell, is the right patient. So I'm going to check to see what blood tests have been ordered. So we've ordered a complete blood count in a lavender tube and a comprehensive chemistry in a gold, red, or tiger top. So I'll get my lavender and I'll get my tiger top and I'll put them in the correct order. So serum is drawn before lavender. So first, second, and then I will assess the patient's uh, vein situation because not every patient has beautiful veins. So you always wanna make sure the tourniquet isn't twisted. You're gonna pull it away from their skin so you don't pinch their skin. Clasp, tuck the left tail under the right tail, pinch it between your left fingers and then use your tuck in that tail with your index finger. And then ta-da, we have a little quick release right here. So this is what we pull to release it in the vein when during the stick. So I'm now going to palpate with my index finger or my um, middle finger. Never palpate with your thumb. Your thumb has a pulse. You don't want to stick a needle into anything that has a pulse and you can't tell if it's your pulse or the patient's pulse if you're using your thumb. So always use your index or middle finger to palpate, it should be six. So then we're going to have the patient make a fist, if they're capable, and then palpate for the vein. The vein should be spongy and trampoline-y. Um, you wanna track the direction of the vein because sometimes they can jaunt off to the side. Um, if that happens, you can even just move the patient's arm so that the vein is straight for you. Um, find some visual landmarks to help you find the vein. This patient happens to have track marks. Um, but sometimes you can find a mole or a little wrinkle in their skin to help you find the vein again because once you wash it with alcohol, you can't touch it again. So we found the vein. It's a good vein. So I can use a regular needle instead of a butterfly. Release the tourniquet um, so we don't get hemoconcentration of our sample. And I'm going to assemble my uh, tube holder with my needle. So this is a 21 gauge needle, which is uh, one of the bigger ones. We also have 22 gauge needles, which are slightly smaller. So if a patient had smaller veins, this would be a good option. And to do this, I'm going to kind of hold onto this green part with my middle finger and my thumb, and then gently twist off this white part. Um, if you don't hold onto the green part, sometimes it pops off and then you have to throw away the entire um, apparatus. And then take our tube holder and twist it in. And inside of this gray part is a needle and that's what actually punctures the top of the tube. So you're gonna finger tighten it. Doesn't have to be super tight, just finger tight. And this is designed so that the safety device, um, when you pull it back, should align, the bevel should be up. So now I'm going to put my tube in there. I'm not pushing it onto the needle right now because that will cause my tube to lose its vacuum, but I just have it ready. And then I also have the label facing down so that as the tube fills, I can see it filling. So I'm gonna set this off to the side. I'm also gonna make that you're using um, for phlebotomy should be set off to the side of your non-dominant hand because your dominant hand is gonna be holding the needle. So I've set this off to my side. I've got my needles off to my side. I'm going, I've got my tubes. I need some gauze. People always forget the gauze, but it's next to impossible to grab gauze or open gauze um, one-handed. So I always have that off to the side. And I'm gonna grab my alcohol um, so that it's ready and open it up. You wanna make sure everything's ready to go so that when you have that tourniquet on, it can be on the least amount of time as possible. You don't want the tourniquet on for longer than a minute. I've also got my coat of band ready to bandage them up when we are done. So I'm gonna retie my tourniquet. Oop. So 
All right. I can palpate from my vein again just to double check at this point because I haven't washed it. Be like, yep, there it is. Have my patient make a fist during this. So you want them to make a fist until you're in the vein. So then we're going to scrub back and forth with the alcohol. It used to be recommended to use concentric circles um, moving out from the um, puncture site, but uh, that's actually, research has shown that um, going back and forth is better for infection control. So we're gonna let the alcohol dry because we don't wanna stick the needle in the arm while there's alcohol on there because it will sting the patient. It can also cause hemolysis of the sample for that alcohol to dry before we do anything. You don't wanna blow on it. You don't wanna like touch it after this point. Um, once I palpated for the vein and I start washing with the alcohol, I just keep my eyes on the site where I'm going to be sticking so that I don't lose it, especially if they don't have good visual landmarks. All right, so now we're going to hold this like a remote control. All right, it's just kind of resting in here. I'm mostly holding the tube holder rather than the tube. The tube's just kind of resting. I'm going to pull back this safety feature, take off the cap inspect the needle for any uh, issues, um, like burrs or anything like that that's gonna cause pain to the patient. Make sure the bevel is up, and I'm going to anchor the vein with the thumb of my non-dominant hand. And to anchor the vein, I'm gonna be a few inches below the draw site. I'm going to press down and then kind of pull it taut. And then I'm going to enter at a 15 to 30 degree angle in a firm, swift motion. The slower you go, the more painful it is. And if you notice, before I pulled out my thumb, I rested this finger against his arm. And before I push the tube on, I'm gonna make sure this finger's resting against his arm because that's gonna help prevent the needle from moving. So to push the tube on, I have my thumb of my non-dominant hand against the bottom of the tube, the index finger against this ledge of the tube holder, and I'm gonna pinch them together. And you can see that the tube, the needle didn't move. The tube is filling, which is great, which means I'm in the vein. If I wasn't in the vein, I could try advancing the needle forward a little bit. I could try drawing the needle back a little bit in case I wasn't completely in the vein. You don't wanna go fishing around going different directions with the um, needle, just forward and back. Um, so now that the tube is done filling, to pop it off, I'm going to kind of grip it between my middle finger and my thumb and then use my index finger to pop it off against the base of the tube holder, kind of like a pin cap. Invert it and then push the new tube on once again with that pinching motion and always having my fingers resting as his forearm. So this, these tubes don't have a whole lot of vacuum in them right now, but if I was concerned that it was an issue with my vein, I could slowly move it back and forward. As you can see, I'm just very slowly moving my thumb to move the, advance the needle forward and back. And I can release the tourniquet. Um, I could have released the tourniquet while the first tube was filling. Um, I just forgot it's better to do it while the first tube was filling, especially if you're new to changing tubes because sometimes when you're changing tubes, the needle can pop out. And if that tourniquet is still on, the uh, blood can start bubbling out of the open uh, wound, which is disconcerting for you as the phlebotomist as well as for the patient. So we're gonna invert it to mix the blood with the anticoagulant. And before we take the needle out, we're gonna make sure the tourniquet's off. We're gonna have the patient release his fist and he could release his fences as soon as he's uh, done, as soon as you're in the vein. And then we're going to gently place the gauze over the needle without pressing down, pull the needle out, cap the needle using the safety feature with our thumb. You can also do it against the table if that's something you like. And then we're gonna dispose of this needle. For your safety as a phlebotomist, you want to avoid a needle stick. So your first job as soon as that needle comes out is to shield the needle and get rid of it. So that way you don't have an accidental needle stick. So I'm applying pressure to this area. And if the patient's conscious, you can have the patient apply pressure at this time while you're labeling tubes. You also want to take time to assess the patient and be like, hey, how are you doing? You feeling okay? Because a lot of times, um, well, sometimes patients will have a vasovagal reactions after the blood draw is finished, whether they'll get lightheaded or nauseous. So it's a good idea to assess them and make sure they're doing okay. All right, so we apply pressure. Um, before we bandage it, we want to make sure it's stopped bleeding. So we always check to make sure it's done bleeding. Some people are taking anti or blood thinners, so it might take them longer to bleed. So you'd apply, continue to apply pressure until it stops bleeding. You will change to a new piece of gauze. Fold it up into a little square so that when you tie on your coda band or place your bandage, it actually adds additional pressure onto the site to prevent uh, reopening that puncture site. So 
gonna wrap this around him. And you'll have the patient avoid using this, um, keep it bandaged for at least 15 minutes and avoid doing any hefty, heavy lifting for an hour. So avoid reopening the puncture site, especially for people who are on blood thinners. So now that he is bandaged and taken care of, I can label my tubes. And you always want to label with the patient's first and last name, legibly. Um, a lot of hospitals will have barcodes, um, labels that print off um, so you don't have to manually label a unique identifier. I'm going to do his birth date, the date of the draw, your initials, and the time of the draw. And then if the patient's conscious, it's, it's good practice to go like, hey, can you confirm that this is right? And you always want to label before you leave the patient's bedside and you always wanna label after the tube is filled. You never wanna label an empty tube because say you're doing a blood draw on a patient and you are just not getting a sample from them. And now you have all these labeled tubes, you forget about them and then you take them to another patient's room and you accidentally fill a labeled tube with someone else's blood. And then you have a patient misidentification that you might not catch and you can have some problems there. So always label tubes after they're filled and at the patient's bedside. All right, so we also clean up our site and we would then put these in a baggie with the requisition slip and send it off to the lab. And that's how you do a blood draw.